Hi, Chris, did you want to start now? I'm happy to start. Are you going to do the uh, introductions? And then I'll uh, switch my microphone back on when we're into that. Yes, great. Okay. So um, I'm going to go ahead and switch the screen. Well, actually, I'm going to switch the screen a little bit later on. Let me go ahead and introduce Chris. My name is Barbara Lindsay, and I'm really pleased and honored to be able to introduce um, Chris Smith, otherwise known as Shambles Guru. I do follow you on Twitter. He describes himself as a digital nomad evangelist who's been working mainly with international school teachers in Southeast Asia for more than 25 years. He was previously the ICT advisor for the English School Foundation in Hong Kong, where he was the head of their teacher professional development center and then responsible for writing, implementing, monitoring, and evaluating the foundation's overall ICT development plan. Currently, Chris freelances around Southeast Asia and Australasia with an EdTech focus. Also, many of you might not know this yet, but Chris is also the person who created the Reform Symposium online conference Prezi that's on the main page of the conference, which provides the resources and links and the where-tos and the how-tos for conference participants. It's really good Prezi, so you should all check, check it out. Um, today, Chris is going to be engaging us with QR codes, a bridge between reality and virtuality. So thank you very much, Chris. Oh, and also, if I could right now, yes, if everybody could give a round of applause for Chris. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch really quickly over to the map so that everybody has an opportunity to pinpoint on the map where you're from. Let me go see if I can remember exactly where that is. I'm going to go back here. Oh, and then I just also want to let everybody know that um, make sure that you check the schedule. Here is the schedule online that you can take a look at. Um, let me see. Here's the schedule online, so you can take a look at that. And also, um, the organizers do want you to know, make sure that you um, fill out this form. It will uh, enter you into a raffle of wonderful prizes. So check out these two schedules for the other information that's available. And I am, again, still looking for that one screen that we, yes, here we go. So if you notice on the left-hand side of the map here, you can see on the left-hand side over here, you can see some icons. And the very top row on the left-hand side is a pointy arrow pointing to the left. Use that arrow to drag. Oh, you guys have already got it. Great. Yeah, right down, um, point out where you're from. Use any one of those little cute um, little happy face icons, either the yellow or the greenish, greenish blue. And then also in the chat, I know folks were already doing that. If you could do it again, just where you're from and what the temperature is or what the weather's like where you're from. Um, over to the very left of the map, you should have some icons. And one of the icons at the top is a pointing arrow pointing to the left. If you take that arrow and then go over to the map and click and drag on any one of those little blue icons that are left over, or you could, if somebody's already done, choose another icon that's from the down below the map. You'll see those. Great. And also, folks, just if you um, haven't done this already, sometimes it's a lot easier to see the chat if you go up to View and then Layouts and do the wide layout in the chat view. And that gives you a, a larger space to see the chat discussion that's going on. And Maureen and I, Maureen is also the other facilitator, Maureen and I are going to be taking care of looking at the questions. And if um, Chris misses any one of those, we'll be sure to bring it to his attention. And Chris, I'm going to hand it over to you and have you pop over to the slide that you'd like. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, can I do a microphone check? Uh, on a scale of 0 to 5, where 0 is you can't hear me and 5 is it's really good, can you just put that into chat? 10. No zeros. Ah, so we've got no uh, <laughs> cue. <laughs> okay, that's good. Actually, the audio is so important here. I'm not using uh, a webcam. You, you've seen a picture of my avatar already. Um, the reason is I'm in North Thailand. I'm in Chiang Mai, and Chiang Mai is about um, 
an hour flight north of Bangkok and the connectivity in Asia is uh, not what it might be so uh, I'm trying to keep the risk minimal to, uh, uh, to my, for my connectivity. So I'm not going to use the webcam although we will take some risks later. So uh, um, yeah, let's get straight down to it. Um, if you want to find out more about me, you can just uh, you can Google me. You know, Google's that. Uh, no, no, I won't go that way. Um, QR codes. Let's move on to here. QR codes. Quick response codes. They were actually started um, what just under ten years ago now in uh, Japan. Very big in Japan. Actually, if there's anybody here in Japan, I didn't, I didn't catch it looking at where you were from. Uh, it'd be interesting to hear your comments on how how much you see them in in, in Japan. Um, they were started by a company called Denso, which is a, a sub company of Toyota to do with license plates on cars. Um, and QR stands for quick response. Um, and the difference between a QR code and a barcode, you can see in the slides. I've got a QR code there, same you see in Tesco supermarket or Walmart or, or wherever. And uh, the QR codes, um, you can see they're square. Uh, and they have a few advantages, and this is why they're catching on. One is they tend to be faster to scan, apparently. Um, they have a higher success rate if they're damaged. Apparently, if you have a QR code, you can sort of rip 30% off it, and it will still, it will still work. <laughs> and then only seeing it once. In a, in a CSI program where the uh, case was, was, was all around that. Um, there's less processing needed uh, and the use of QR codes, there's no license. The guy who invented them is, has made them free to use. Um, and the, the idea is very simple. In the QR code, um, you can put information in it. And I, I will show you how we do that. And you can put information in it. That information could be, um, it, well, it's to places on the web somewhere. So it can be any to any type of digital media. So it could be to a regular web page. It could be to a video, audio, text, map, a booking form, payment for something. It could be your address book. So that when somebody scans a QR code with a mobile phone, then um, your information, if you put that in the QR code, would go into your phone or mobile device. And uh, to be very honest, I can't remember where that QR code uh, takes me to there. Uh, now, if you have a mobile phone, it will be fun to use it now. Um, let me uh, move on to the next slide. It will be fun to move it. <laughs> You know, so I don't know whether you've ever done this before. Some, you, sometimes you do presentation slides, and I've only got six slides anyway. Uh, and you think, and you have a really good idea of how you're going to start off a presentation. I really can't remember what I was going to say about this slide. Um, but I think it goes something like this, that in the early days, um, sort of in Queen Victoria times, uh, you'd have a, a lorry, and which is a truck for North Americans. and um, you have a lorry, and on it it would say shambles guru movers, and that's all you'd need. And if you wanted to know more, you'd stop it and ask the driver. And then they started to put more information. The telephones were invented, that went on there, and then emails, then websites, then some information about the company. And, and if you used to stand by the side of the road and this would drive past you and you got your piece of paper out and your pencil, it, it was gone before beforehand. Well, now, now, all of that information on the type on the side of the van can be put into a QR code, so that as the as the van or the lorry drives past, then all you need to do is uh, point your mobile device, your iPad, it could be, or your mobile phone, at the QR code, um, and with a QR code reader, just take a picture with your camera, and the QR reader in your mobile device will interpret it. Can I just check, how many of you have already used QR codes? Yes, I'm, I, 
I have a feeling I'm, I'm not the most experienced person in the room. In fact, I know one of the moderators has had more upfront experience in this, and I'm going to rope her in. Uh, to, sounds like, oh, it's a Texas term. I'm going to rope her in um, to uh, uh, for part of this because she shared something in uh, an email to me, uh, and it looked brilliant. So QR. So that's basic. That's all there is behind the QR code. It's not. It's not rocket science or brain surgery. I'm just uh, hesitating while I sort of glance through the through the chat, uh, but I'm the wrong gender to be a to be a multitasker. <laughs> okay, so QR codes. Let's look at how how you'd read them first before you have, before before how you make them. Um, this is a screenshot of my iPad actually, my iPad 2. This won't work on an iPad 1 because. Yeah. Somebody type it in. The only need down. Hey. Somebody give Carol a prize. And uh, Carol, I have a free bottle of uh, wine. Just collect it from in time. Um, it needs a camera, of course, so the iPad one doesn't work, which is which, which is really which is really sad. Although if you're a real iPad nerdy person and somebody's got a phone, you can actually wirelessly connect the camera from an iPhone to an iPad, but no need anymore if you've got an iPad too. Um, so these are the QR readers, and some of them are writers, that are on my iPad too. Now, I've only got this many because I've been sort of playing with them and evaluating them. And my, my favorite that works on uh, the iPad and the iPhone, and I don't know about Android, if, if if there's an Android user here, please, please, if I talk about anything and you know the Android equivalent, throw it, throw it in the chat. Um, but my favorite that I seem to use all the time is this one. And so actually it would be a good idea, an opportunity for you now, is to, uh, on your phone or your iPad too, is to go whizzing off to uh, uh, Banks UK Grossman. Um, Go off to iTunes uh, on your device, do a search for, you can't read it, it says scanner, it says scanner there, but the icon is pretty uh, noticeable, it's just a big black icon with QR on it. Uh, and that's the one I found personally, I, I actually quite like. <laughs> okay. It's great that you put these other, these other uh, favorites in there. No questions. I'm keeping it, I'm keeping a left eye on the screen. One hand raised. I'll leave the moderators to deal with that through chat for the moment. Next slide. So say there's only it's half a dozen slides anyway. So that's uh, so how it works is when you've loaded this onto you onto your uh, um, iPhone or iPad, so you click on it, it opens up a window in, on, on your device, uh, you point your device to the code, you point the camera of your device to the code, the app reads it and does whatever it says it, in the code that it wanted you to do. And I have a feeling that the one on the screen now, I think, I, if, if any, I think it said, take you to a browser and take you to uh, um, uh, a browser with my information, I think. No, uh, quick mark, I, I know a lot of people that use quick mark. Right, so let's move on to the next slide. I should tell you, it's uh, after midnight here, so if I'm a bit slow, uh, hopefully you'll understand. Now, so that's how you read them. It, it really is so simple, it, it's amazing. And creation, how do you create them? And at the end of this, I'm actually going to give you a list of um, other ways of making them and, and other ways of reading them. Um, I'm going to give you some ideas of, even if you don't have a mobile device, or even a mobile device, um, I'm going to show you how you can find information about just using your desktop or your laptop and the webcam in there to make use of, barcodes, uh, of QR codes as well. Right, so that's creation, uh, and, and now, uh, so that's reading, and now creation. Now, there's several ways, and I have a favorite. 
please put your favorite way to make it in, in, in here. Now, my favorite way of making a QR code is Google. Google actually have a way of, uh, uh, of making QR codes. Now, I'm, I've made a video of it, but I'm not going to show it you now. Um, I think the time can be better spent. Oh, I can show it. Um, I'll show you where the video is because then that will be useful to use in the future yourself, but also with students and other and other colleagues. If uh, <laughs> if you wrote back on Monday morning to, be, to 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 report when you go back to school to wrote back to report back at uh, to the staff meeting. Um, so to make a QR code, I'm going to recommend um, using Google. Because Google have a, a way where you can take a long URL, a long web address, and shorten it. Google have a special shortening service. At the same time that it shortens the URL, it makes a QR code, and it's a JPEG, and so you just save it, and that's it. You've made a QR code. But that's you know, it's better to see it done, and so I'll point you to the to the video. And the video uh, the video is uh, URL is there in YouTube. Um, the other thing, the other reason that I'm mentioning, uh, recommending Google is that it keeps, without you having to do anything, analytics. So if you made a QR code for your class and the children, the students are taking pictures of it, are reading it with their mobile device, device, device then uh, Google will keep a record of every time it's scanned. Uh, okay, I'm not, now I'm not going to address some of those questions yet. So Google will take a, 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 a will, will collect the analytics, so you can you know every time it's been scanned. The other thing I want to mention now, but somebody please has to bring me back to this because I'm not going to dwell on it for the moment, is that. It's no good sending somebody with a QR code with an iPhone or an iPad to a movie that's made using Flash. Because Flash doesn't work on the iPhone and the iPad. So what's the point? I have a workaround, but you must bring me back to that at the end. I'm not going to go through it now. So somebody in chat has to bring me back to that. How you can use an iPhone and a QR code and then send you to a site that normally plays flash videos. How do you get around that? So remind me about that. So that's it. Uh, um, that's how, how you uh, read them and how you make them. Now we haven't talked much yet about um, use and teaching learning and We'll mention a few, and hopefully you will mention some in, in chat as well as we go through here, where it's already been used in uh, in classrooms. And let me see, what is my next slide? Here we go. Okay. Now I have a I have a website called Shambles. It was mentioned at the beginning, which I established back in 2002. Oh, it's nearly 10 years old. Which gets about 10,000 visitors a day. And lots of the links on Shambles has been uh, been put there by teachers, because most pages have a form at the bottom of them uh, where you can submit um, uh, websites. So I'm going to go to the QR codes page. I'm actually looking in chat at the moment though for, for the examples that are being put there. One of my first examples, uh, before we look at the web page, uh, which really started, I think it was an example that started me thinking about QR codes. It was a biology teacher. Any biology teachers here? Bi it was biology teachers. Uh, it was a biology teacher. And going into their, their biology lab, I noticed that there was the old dusty skeleton that there is in every biology lab in the corner. But over this particular skeleton were lots of QR codes. And I said, what, what are these about? And what, what they'd done, what he did, it was a guy, it was a guy what, what he'd done is he made QR codes and stuck them on parts of the skeleton. So it stuck one, say, on the skull. And then the students used their mobile phones. Now, 
no moaning that your, no, your mobile phones are banned in your school at the moment. Uh, but, but when the students scan the mobile phone, and scan the QR code with their mobile phone of the QR code that he put on the skull, it would send them off to either a web page or a video or an audio file with more information about the skull. Now I think that's brilliant. The health warning, of course, with all of this is that please don't go back to school and borrow the skeleton and do this with the skeleton. But the, the value of this, like with, with so many things in, in teaching and learning, is please, please, oh, please, don't do it for the kids. Because if you were doing something like that, you have the kids' research. And, and I know this is, I know I'm telling, you know, this is grandmother sucking eggs type of conversation for me, I know. But the kids making the QR codes, researching the sites or resources, that should, they should go to when they scan the QR codes on the skull or the foot or the different bones. Um, so, so please don't don't. It's a survival skill, isn't it? Don't do it for the for the kids. Now, I want to look at this. I'm going to go to this page uh, that's on here now, uh, and the, and the uh, address is at the bottom. Now, I'm just going. Now, I'm going to do it by sharing my desktop. But if you're having bandwidth problems with this, or if I have bandwidth problems with this, then I put the URL into chat already so that you can uh, follow my discussion, follow my talk uh, as we go down this page. So I'm just going to go to this particular uh, web page, and the rest of the time, probably be about 10 minutes or so, we will look at this because what I want to do is to give you the resources to help you follow this up afterwards. I don't want to, I'm not going to rattle through a whole load of things quickly. Actually, there's some brilliant stuff going into chat. Ah, <laughs> I'm, being, I'm, being, I'm being anticipated here because I want to remember, I want to give the last half an hour to one of the, in the moderators whose heart rate has just jumped a little bit. So let me see if I can share my, uh, my, uh, apps, application sharing, uh, host entire share, oops, application sharing, share application, Google Chrome, I'm a real Google fanboy. Now, I'm hoping that on your screen you can see my desktop browser. Hey, hello you guys. You, 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 I love this because I, I'm looking at the, the, the my, my main Illuminate screen, oh sorry I shouldn't say Illuminate anymore, my Blackboard Collaborate screen uh, and some of you did the smiley faces without being asked. So hopefully you can all see this and I'll, I'll scroll slowly because uh, scrolling fast can be a, uh, a problem when you're sharing applications on your desktop. Let's, uh, let's have a look. Now, these are actually in reverse chronolo chronological order. I can't believe I could say that at 12.30 at night. These are in reverse chronological order. Um, and I'm not going to go to all of them. I'll go to one or two. So I'm just going to give you some sort of verbal feedback on each of these so that you can, uh, can come back if you want to in your own time. Um, or if your staff meeting when you do this, you can dish these out, these sites out to different staff members and ask them to report back at the end of your staff meeting um, and the kids as well. Now there's a double bonus to this. <laughs> I love this page because it's evolved by people putting lots of different information about QR codes in different web 2.0 tools. So there's a double bonus for actually going through this page if you're running a teacher professional development event yourself. Oh. Wait a minute, I'm just going to look in chat again. Has anybody in the last 20 minutes downloaded the QR code reader and successfully used it? Three bottle of wine to everybody that says yes. Wait a minute, you're a lie. There you can begin. I love it. Brilliant. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Teacher on the edge. <laughs> Who would have said less? 
about Peggy, you're going to have to have anyway. <laughs> Peggy, but you're going to have to tell us, I don't know what an eye enigma is. What is an eye enigma? I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know that one. Brilliant. That's great. Okay, let's go through these anyway. Yeah, they're in reverse chronological order. So the last, the last one that we only went a few days ago, it says 15 beautiful and creative QR codes. The interesting, remember right at the beginning I said, there won't be a test at the end, uh, but at the beginning I mentioned that one of the positive sides of QR codes is you can damage them quite a lot. And they still work, they still hold the information. You don't, you know, Japanese are so, so clever. And, uh, and that means that people have started modifying them by actually embedding logos in. So you could have a QR code which took people to the school website and embedded cleverly with colour in the QR code was the school logo. Now how cool would that be when you went back to school and you showed somebody that? Now that first thing will take you to some ideas to get you thinking about that. Uh, and uh, and also some ways you might do it, but also there are some further down this list. The next one was uh, QR treasure hunt generator was sent to me. Have I got it up here? Where is it? It's, oh, it's this one. I, I don't know how long this is going to get to you. If you can see this page, can you give me a smiley? It says QR. Uh, here we go. Okay, it's going. I see one or two people. It's a bit slow. This was put up only last week um, by a nation member from the UK. I don't know how that Cowie could probably guess. Um, this is taking the hard work out of it. It, 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 it. If you want to create, if you want to create a treasure hunt, so it's any age group, it's any, um, it's any curriculum area, and you can create treasure hunts. I hope you've appreciated by now that if you're an advocate of mobile devices in school or well, mobile devices are actually banned in school at the moment and and to be honest I can't blame senior managers banning school uh, ban, banning schools banning mobile phones in schools uh, because they don't know how to manage them yet uh, it's, a, it's a matter of evolution but what we're looking at in, in this 40 minutes or so is that QR codes are a very big reason for switching your mobile device on. Um, okay, so that's uh, that's a nice uh, website there. It's been put, put together by classtours.net. Um, <laughs> this other one, this other one is a new one for me as well. Just last week. <laughs> um, famous Five, mind you, Famous Five. I think is North America won't know what Famous Five books are. Except the librarians. I hope there's some librarians here. <laughs> I'm, hesitant, I'm just, I'm just uh, pausing to see if there's any response to Famous Five. I think you're going off and looking at it. Put the little cheats. <laughs> Famous Five is a sort of a mystery series, but five, five children in a mystery series books, and uh, somebody is. Uh, brought it into the 21st century and uh, have the famous five doing problem solving using QR codes. Let's move on. Um, right, where are we are. QR codes and teaching and learning. A lot of these you can do them. You just go and play yourself. Uh, oh, paper links is interesting. Paper links is somebody has just used paper links to find lots of resources about QR codes. Paper links is like uh, an online magazine or newspaper and all you do is you go into paper links, you tell it what you're interested in, it searches the web and builds an online newspaper in your browser. Don't go there now. Save it for a special occasion. <laughs> QR code applications there, seven things to know about it. Um, let's keep going down. Okay, here we have a YouTube uh, video which I've embedded. So embedding YouTube videos. Of course, if YouTube is blocked, quite often embedding YouTube videos and blogs can get you around the block. If the school network box, box, box them. Um, I, earlier I mentioned that 
if you don't have a mobile device and you have a desktop with a webcam or you have a laptop with a webcam, then there are ways you can make use of QR codes using that. So it's more always not lost. You can bring the box of cornflakes in, which has a QR code on the side, and still use find out information about it on uh, uh, on your desktop machines or your laptops. And so just look at this YouTube video. It's all there. Cyber man's QR codes in the classroom. Is he in here? I think I've seen him. He's somewhere around. Okay, giant QR codes in the classroom. When you go to this particular site, you'll see a picture of uh, a giant, enormous QR code, which a school has put outside the front of the school. So if people are going past, they can use their mobile devices, scan the QR code, and find information about the school. <laughs> it looks brilliant. Um, some of these are self-explanatory. QR code, classroom implementation guide, do's and don'ts, what to look out for, library. Librarians in here, please, please say there's some librarians here. Librarians are one of my most favourite groups of people in schools because they're some of the most undervalued people in schools as well. Now you we're in an age, we're in an information literacy age, and who are our information literacy gurus? It's the librarians. No, they're not. Really, nobody's responding. Oh, <laughs> what a shame. Hey, anyway, QR codes in like when you go back to school. Tell your librarian about these resources. It's amazing. Um, let's go through. Deliver actually is a web 2.0 tool. And if you use any of these, let's have you know say yes or no. It's good, rubbish, miss it, hug it. Um, uh, but somebody just used Deliver to uh, um, find information about QR codes. QR code connect students to books, that's for librarians. Somebody here has used um, um, I've forgotten. Help me out. What is this? In front of us now. How can I forget this? It's, it's, uh, no, it's not in it's a It's a website that makes them. You can make a poster like this. You just go to a website and you make a poster and it's interactive. Wow! Of course, Grogster. My only excuse is it's so late at night. Grogster. So somebody's used a Grogster here to actually explain about QR codes, and it's a librarian. A librarian again. When you go back to school, hug your librarian. QR codes in the library, more about it. I said I, I wasn't going to spend time showing you how to make a QR code using Google. Here is a screencast I made. So uh, you know, come and look at this screencast, uh, and it's fairly self-explanatory. The advantage of using Google, as a reminder, is it shortens the URL, so you could actually write it down if you wanted to. But <laughs> that's the whole point of QR codes: is you don't have to do that. Uh, it makes the QR code automatically, it, but it's the analytics. Google keeps track, but you have to have signed in. You have to have a Google account. Uh, so you have to sign in, uh, and it keeps track of the analytics, so you know how many times somebody's scanned that giant code outside the front of the school. Okay, QR codes in education. Oh, here's a live binder. Thank goodness Shelley's not in the room, otherwise we'd be talking about live binders for the next 10 minutes. She's a, a fan girl of live binders. This is a great, great page of different Web 2.0 tools that people have used. So, Somebody's put the live binder together with lots of information about QR codes. Here's a Grogster. Actually, I had a thing in that last one I said wasn't a Grogster. That, that QR code at a glance. That's not a Grogster, is it, guys? I was absolutely wrong. Here's a Grogster. Multimedia. QR codes, lessons and resources, how to use QR codes in student products, projects. Eighth grade examples, micro QR codes. That's a good question. Is how big do QR codes have to be in centimeters? Now the techies will tell you in pixels, but in centimeters, uh, how small can they be? Um, and the only way is to 
scan it and see. I nearly said suck it and see. It's to scan it and see. Uh, just print it out on a piece of paper and then scan it and see if it works on your mobile device. About a centimetre. Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute, let me translate. You're not using centimetres in North America, are you? They're on the way over there on a slow boat across the Pacific, Atlantic. Um, a couple of centimetres, two centimetres, less than an inch by less than an inch, usually work for me. Um, using QR codes to update Twitter, QR codes education, sticky bits. There's an app, I think we're almost to the end here. Uh, well, Teach Me, Teach Me is, uh, is and, and there are several people in the, in the room that know more about Teach Me than I do. Teach Me is just groups of teachers that get together after school every now and again. Uh, it seems to be very big in the UK and uh, they just share ideas and uh, there was one teach me where they streamed it online and I happened to get a recording or could or link to a recording. QR code, QR codes with Google, the other one the apps, QR codes in education. Here we have a slide share. So this is somebody who's done a PowerPoint and embedded it into slide share. One day I should go through and count how many different web 2.0 apps are used just on this page. Here's another uh, presentation, uh, which is a PowerPoint which has been embedded into SlideShare. QR code generators. Here's somebody who's made a Prezi. Oh, you lost sound. Has everybody lost sound? Well, heart attack. Okay. <laughs> heart attack. Right. Um, there's a Prezi here, and Prezi is, I, I, I really like Prezi, unfortunately it's not free, um, for making multimedia presentations. You can embed uh, videos into Prezi. Generators, generators, well, oh, I've uh, done a bit of research on, on YouTube videos about QR codes, and actually if you went to here, there's 18 videos in this playlist, and at the end, that may be almost a good place to start. Oh, here's some another. Oh, here's a Google Doc, <laughs> another Web 2.0 tool being used to give you information about QR codes. So this is a, a Google Doc, which I have a feeling if you go to it, it will go into your QR, into your Google Docs list, so you can edit it. And there's an official site, and there's an official uh, uh, Wikipedia page. Of course, of course, Wikipedia has an official page for everything. Right, so let me just close this, if I can remember how I close this, application sharing. Uh, okay, and go to my last slide because I'd like to have a few minutes with, with to give Maureen, if you would Maureen, to, uh, um, to share a little bit of your experience. But my last slide actually is this slide. I uh, I redesign my name cards. Sorry about this. They're on paper. I redesigned my name cards about six months ago, and I had a debate. And in fact, I had a debate on one of my blogs, which is a posturous blog. I'm a posturous fanboy, and I had a debate about my name card, my new name card, what should I put on it? Should I put a word on it and be fancy or should I put QR codes and if I do, what do I, what should they go to? Uh, and there's a great debate that went on about what I should do. In fact, one of those QR codes will go, when you scan it with your mobile device, will go to a browser and will uh, do, do an auto search for Shambles Guru. Uh, and so that was my last slide. Actually, I wanted to mention one thing before I, I finished and before Maureen had some time about videos. If you have, not every video will play on a mobile device. It's no good using an iPhone and an iPad and sending somebody off to a website or a video that won't play on the device because it doesn't, it's not the right format, it's not just Flash, some other formats don't like, WMB don't like to play on, on iPads and, and iPhones. Um, there is a website, let me type the address in. It's 
this website, Didley, is quite amazing. What you want to do is you want to try and download your, your, your video. You want to try and get your video in some way, so it's on your computer, on your hard drive. And that's easy for, 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 um, for YouTube. Let's not discuss the legitimacy at the moment. Um, that's another talk. Um, it's very clever. If you upload a video to Bidly, because it's free, what it does is it takes the video and it converts it into, I think, it, I'm not sure, 12, 12 different versions of the video, of different formats of the video, and it will give you one URL. So if you send people to that URL with any device, what Vividly does is it looks at the device, it's magic. How does it do that? It's magic, right? What is technology? It looks at the device that's, that you are using and it will automatically give you the version of the video that will play on your device. Now, it's not just the version, but it's the resolution as well, because if you're sending it to a big screen, you'd like it to be sharper than if you're sending it to a small screen with poor connectivity. Uh, and it's brilliant. It really is good. So, you, if you're using a QR code to send somebody to a YouTube video, it's best not to send them to the page, because first of all, you don't want them to go through all of that rubbish around the outside of the video. So if you actually download the video, send it up to YouTube, you get full screen. Now I've done that in my earlier slide. Let me see what I let me see if I can go back to that. In my earlier slide here, you know, I'm using I'm sending people to full screen versions of, of uh, YouTube videos, not uh, not not the not the page. Uh, Peggy, it, it, vid, Vidly it is free. I I used it first about six months ago, and it's still free. Um, and, and actually, I don't think you even have to sign up. There's no signing up involved. You don't even have to create an account. You go there, it gives you your URL. It says, remember this. Uh, you upload your video, and you have to remember the URL. Although I think it says, give me your web address, uh, your email address, and I'll send you the URL, because you really don't trust you, and I bet you didn't write it down. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, no. Okay, you, you, okay, now Maureen, how, are you up to sort of coming on for a few minutes and sharing the experiences you have with kids? I'd love you to. Sure. sure. I, I, first of all, I, I started it just to um, share with the staff so we could have an easier way to share our long URL because the URL that we have for our schools is um, super long and a lot of parents um, have to take so much time to write it down and the pronunciations, there are a lot of dots and inevitably someone always copied it down incorrectly. So the main thing I wanted to do was to be able to provide um, visitors and on our web page a quicker way of having our URL without the incorrections and typos. Then I thought, well, it would be useful in the classroom too because I started seeing more of the links that you just shared. Um, um, live binders and other ways to integrate it with education. So we started having students create them just for fun because they're fascinated with it. Um, they're much more fascinated with it than the teachers are, but again, this is their world. They're used to all the technology. However, um, once they started creating them, we started having to use our tools. The students, again, are blocked from cell phones in the classroom. We were allowing them to use our um, mobile devices just so they could practice using them, our iPhones and um, some teachers had their new iPads and they were just fascinated with how quickly the URL appears. Um, for presentation purposes is the main reason why I use it now. I have them at the beginning of the slide and the end of the slide similar to your presentations because again a lot of the URLs that I share were so long and then if you're at the back of a, a workshop it's so difficult to write down or see the URL. So I've got copied this from other workshops I attended. I've noticed um, all of a sudden a presentation would come up and the only thing would be 
on it would be a URL in the center of it and maybe the title of the presentation and everyone going up and flashing real quick so that they could get all the presenters handouts and um, or links to their website. So I started doing the same thing. Um, in the beginning of my pre presentation, I was giving the link to our um, web page, but at the end of it, so that they would stay for the whole presentation, is when I gave them a copy of all our handouts. It was a link to our um, tutorials or whatever else I provided. And then it was just a quick way for everybody to have it. And when I attended my last workshop, everyone was using them in their presentations. And what I liked about it, if I attended one, I would use my mobile phone to quickly get the QR code and then um, with QuickMate, I don't know about the other programs, but the app that I have, QuickMate, it enables you to quickly share it with others. So as soon as I took it, I was sharing it with all my coworkers or other people that were there, or um, I was also sharing it with people that were not even at the conference. And then we had quickly had all our URLs together. So if everyone was using their um, mobile devices and sharing the websites, we didn't have to um, send an email sharing all the links. We had them all on our mobile phones um, before we left. And so far that is always used before since students don't have the phones, but they like the extended activity. We sometimes give them um, extra credit so they can do it outside the school um, to create their own and send some ideas. But in the school, in the classroom, we are still limited with the mobile devices. We're trying to um, get access to that. Next year there's a proposal that students are allowed to bring any mobile device with Wi-Fi for internet access so we don't have to pay for computers as much since everything's going to the cloud. Not sure if that's going to pass, but we'll see. And that's all I have. Um, I don't know what else if you want me to share. Well, that's, that's, that's brilliant. Um, I, I'm going to share one more story and then we can uh, uh, open it up if you like for a few minutes if there are any questions. Um, I, if, if you're listening to the recording, not live now, but if you're listening to the recording, probably best not to listen to anything past this bit. Because this is a story which is not really teaching and really, it's just an interesting story. Is um, I understand in New York and London, QR codes are becoming very popular. Um, but for maybe not the right thing with children is uh, you, know, you can walk down the street and on lap <laughs> I think you know where I'm going already on the right make a note of those names and uh, uh, you walk down the streets and there'll be QR codes on lamp posts now some of them will be quite interesting oh, oh there may be QR codes on posters on the wall and it may be something like uh, um, a concert and the QR code if you flash it with your, your mobile phone, uh, your mobile device, uh, it will take you to a website about the concert. Or it may even take you to somewhere where you can buy tickets straight <laughs> tickets straight away. Um, and so that, uh, that can be very and, and you begin to see those more and more. Now, now this is not my experience. I'm just told this. I read about it in a, a book somewhere. And, uh, but I understand now that there used to be telephone kiosks. Well, that takes us back. Telephone kiosks don't exist in London anymore, do they? They've knocked them all down. But you used to, at late night, you go in a telephone kiosk and, and, on, <laughs> and, on, and on the, <laughs> and on the, all up on the wall would be, would be little notes saying, for a good time, telephone so-and-so at this number. And you could tear off the numbers, so I'm told, and uh, ring up, you'd have a good time. But I don't know what that meant. Well, they've, they've knocked all the telephone kiosks down. So what do these people do who are going to offer you a massage or some sort of service that I don't know what it is they're talking about? And uh, uh, but, but apparently what they're doing is they're making QR codes of their contact and they're putting it on, on lampposts. Now, what the interesting thing is, is they are child safety. They are child safe. And how they made them child safe is that the QR codes, which are going to take you off to naughty stuff, are so high up that the kids can't get their arms up there to actually scan them with their mobile phones. So that, that's, that, I think that's really good, uh, that's really good planning. <laughs> so, so if you're a New Yorker, next time you're walking down the streets, keep, and, and once you start looking, you'll start to find these QR codes around the place, you'll see them. Um, Asia is pretty slow at, at, at adopting them, but you do see them more and more. I see, 
one of the one of the, the things you have to laugh at is on aeroplanes. I get on an aeroplane, pick up the in-flight magazine, uh, read it. Oh, an aero, it's full of QR codes. That's brilliant. Well, hang on though, I'm on an aeroplane and they don't have an internet connection. Really weird. Not not good marketing. So, um, uh, Barbara Maureen, I think that's a good place for me to stop. And if there are okay. any questions, then uh, you can take those. Thanks so much, Chris. Um, I, I wanted to know, yes, could, if everybody could just round of applause for Chris and Maureen and for all of you who shared such great resources. That was fabulous. If anybody wants to ask a question at this point using the audio, could you use the um, upward hand? Oh, wonderful. Okay, we're going to give. Okay, Hi. Siri. Okay, Siri. Hi, I'm just wondering, my QR code reader that I have links, uh, doesn't link directly to the internet. There's like an intermittent step in between. I'm wondering if somebody has um, a site, any um, readers that link directly to the site. If anybody has um, an idea, could you go ahead and raise your hand, do the raise hand icon, and then you can share if you want to do that via audio. I see Peggy is um, asking what smartphone you're using. So Chris, the question was, is there um, a reader that goes directly to the website instead of going through an intermediary step for a, or a site? Okay, my back, yes. Wow, that was weird. Uh, the connection went completely. I came back and I'm not a moderator. Wow, that was really brilliant that it recovered. Um, when you make your QR code, uh, you can actually make it a number of the options, uh, and, and some of them are just do a Google search for making QR codes. Some of them, yes, it will just put the URL in there, and that's all. So it, it doesn't do any shortening. Uh, and, and yes, that's an option. No, yeah, that's definitely an option. Wow, that's the longest rumble when I, when I should have said it. Yes. <laughs> I know originally, um, well, you might want to turn off your, yeah, okay, thanks, Chris. Originally, um, Mark Barnes, 19, had had some questions about whether students understand this or have any difficulty with this, if you have to teach them, if it's realistic, whether they're going to use it or not. Um, I think folks have said pretty much that they are using it, but if anybody wants to chime in with any um, experiences that they've had with the ease of explaining this to students or difficulties you might have had? Most of my students are actually adults because most of my work is with uh, continuing professional development rather than teachers. Um, but uh, I, I have this feeling that if you said to the kids, uh, next lesson, uh, bring your mobile phone in uh, and we're going to do QR codes and download a QR code, uh, and I'm not going to tell you what they are, but when you come, I expect you to have one in the next lesson. I bet they do it. Don't you think so, most of you kids? You know, uh, Sarah, Sarah has a question too about whether it works with audio. Uh, good, good question. The, the answer is, you just, the answer is yes. I do remember on don't I? Why don't you just say yes and no? The answer is yes, it will go to audio files, but you have to put that audio file somewhere online. Um, and there are lots of places where you can put audio files online. It could take you to a podcast. So if, this, if your class has done a podcast and put it on one of the podcast hosting sites, then you just put the URL to that podcast and it will go to the site and play, and play the audio. So, for example, if you do a, a classroom newspaper and you've got some kids to, rec to, to make an audio version of that, so they, 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 uh, they, they actually uh, 
read it and you put it online somewhere, then yes, you you just put the URL to that and uh, it will talk to you, just in the same way as with a video. Sarah had wondered too, does the Google site create audio links? Uh, well, it's, it does. It, it would any URL. So if it's a URL to a to a, an audio file, if it's a web address to an audio file, yeah, Google it doesn't. <laughs> I don't think. I think all Google cares about is that does it begin with HTTP, and as long as it does, it will convert that, make a, a QR code. So when you scan it, it will send you on the internet to where that is. It may be you send it to a Google Map, where it has the pin stuck in there where the school is. So that big giant one that was outside the school, right, you may well do that, I don't know. So you could have a map of this, a Google map of the school, you get that URL, and that's what you put in the QR code. It's going to be great for sort of uh, treasure hunts with kids, sending them around, you know, different, around the classroom even, with clues, um, or, you know, around, around the playground, or, you know, going off on a trip. Uh, just brilliant, highly motivational. That's the thing, isn't it? We need to. It's it's a matter of motivating the kids and making it fun. And I think these are really really good fun. But please, 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 don't take it on your own shoulders to make the treasure hunts. So get the kids to make the treasure hunts themselves. That's the big learning experience. Please don't stay up all day Saturday and Sunday making a QR code treasure hunt. I've got one more question that I thought was really interesting, and that's from Mrs. Salander, Vanessa Allender. She asks, can you track how many times the QR code is used? If you make the QR, and, and remember there's that video to look at, uh, which, uh, and let me just go back to it, uh, this video here, go to this URL, or this URL, or this URL, uh, any of these. Um, uh, if you make your QR code using Google, then Google tracks it even if you don't want it to. So if you use Google to make your QR code, then look at the video that I made, the screencast I made, which is here, and um, Google will automatically keep those analytics. So it will tell you. I'm not even sure whether it also tells you where the person's from. And and whether it has geographical information. It says, well, not only did somebody scan this QR code you made, but they were in Norway when they did it. I'm not even sure, or they're in a certain part of the, of the city. I have a sneaking suspicion it might do. Google does everything. It knows what we're doing everywhere, every moment of the day. <laughs> Well, I think our time's about up, and I want to thank both Chris and Maureen, and again, everyone who participated and shared so freely with their tips and ideas and links. It's been a really inf informative session for me, and I'm going to be going back to the archives to make sure to um, watch this again. Also, before everybody leaves, you can also save the slides and the chat by going up to File, Save As, and then you can select which ones you want to save or both. So we can keep the room open for a couple more minutes so that folks, if they want to, they can do that because I know I'm going to do it because there's a lot of great links here. So thanks, everyone. And I didn't know, um, Chris and Maureen, if you wanted to say anything else. The, the slides are on, uh, are on uh, Flickr. They're just as JPEGs if you want to download the slide. Feel free to use them. Create, notice I'm a big Creative Commons person. Creative Commons here in the bottom right-hand corner says you can, you can, mod, you can copy them, you can modify them, you mustn't sell them and attribute them. So uh, feel free to download them from uh, Flickr. I love it how people do what you're doing, which is putting the URLs into chat. It makes the presenter's job so much easier. I really enjoyed that. Thank you so much. Okay, it said I went away, but can everyone hear me?